y'all welcome back my name is Christina and I love the baby whisperer Tracy Hogg in today's video we're gonna be comparing her book which is called the baby whisperer solves all your problems to this book which is called baby wise and if you haven't heard of baby wise before it is a similar parenting book, actually with a lot of similarities to The Baby Whisperer, but also with a lot of differences. And so we're really gonna be going over those similarities and differences today in this video. I just wanna say before we start, Baby Wise is kind of a controversial book. It's probably one of the most controversial <laughs> parenting books out there. It was only written in 2006. And Tracy Hogg's book was written in 2004, if that gives you any context. So they're similar in that there's a lot of probably the same ideas going out there in the world at that time. But it's just a very different book in the way that it's presented. And I'll talk a little bit about the controversy behind this book too as we get to the differences between the two. So we're gonna start off today and just talk about the similarities between the two books. There's three key similarities that I want to address. There's some other similarities too, I'm sure if you've read them both that you've noticed, but we're just gonna talk about some overarching ones. So the first similarity between these two books is that it is a parent-led philosophy. And so that is as opposed to a baby-led philosophy where you might find other parenting techniques that follow the child rather than that guide and lead the child. So this is a big place where these books are similar. They both present lots of ideas of why it's important to lead your child and guide them. And they also present like routines and schedules and things like that in ways that are meant to help form and shape your child's routine rather than have them form and shape it for you. But additionally, within that, it's not just about what the parent feels is right. They both do follow what is actually age appropriate for your baby. It's not just putting something down on paper that sounds nice for parents. It is actually advice and things that are helpful for your children depending on their age, which I think is why Baby Wise breaks it up into those two giant chunks because there's so much in the first four months and then things get progressively easier after that. And that is a way that Tracy Hogg breaks up things as well. She always does things by age because it's really important to factor your child's age into what is appropriate for them to do throughout the day. The second major similarity is the feed, wake, sleep cycle that both of these books follow when it comes to routines. So this is something that I don't think Tracy talks too much about. I mean, it's her easy routine. It's the E-A-S and easy, but she doesn't talk about the alternative to that. The opposite of that would be an eat sleep activity cycle where you start by feeding them and you follow that immediately by sleep and then the activity happens when they're first awake and then they eat again before their next nap and then it just cycles on like that. I don't know too many books or philosophies that actually follow that cycle but I have heard from people who have tried the baby whisper routine that they were actually able to do the routine but they had to switch the e and the a because their baby just had to have a full stomach while they slept and that is something that is addressed in baby wise that it's actually not good for your baby to become dependent on having a full stomach in order to sleep and that's because there might be a situation where you need to put them down for a nap without them having a full stomach and Tracy would probably call that a sleep prop if your child has to be completely full and stuffed to the brim before they can fall asleep, then they're becoming dependent on eating for sleep. And even though eating and sleep are very much combined and your good eating habits will be reflected in your sleep and vice versa, we don't want to mix them together too much to where they're actually dependent heavily on one another. And the third major similarity kind of ties into the other two, but they're different from modern parenting trends. So things like baby led weaning, co-sleeping, stuff basically that you're hearing influencers talk about or seeing articles about that are modern nowadays. And what I mentioned earlier is that these books are written in the early 2000s, so obviously that's a huge part of it. But I think it is interesting to note that there's not a lot of popular 
parenting trends right now that follow what we did 20 years ago and what these books are actually about. And I think a part of that is due to, obviously we are developing our knowledge more and more about parenting as we continue on, just generation to generation, people learn from mistakes, but it's important, I think, that we're not just on the hottest trend. I think there's always been trends out there that have to do with babies and parenting and whatnot. And it's important that we recognize parenting styles and philosophies from those trends. And what I like about these books is because they are older, they're not necessarily hot topics. And that doesn't mean that they're outdated because good advice should hopefully stick around for a long time. People have been having babies since the beginning of time. So obviously this is stuff that's worked for lots of families and lots of babies throughout many years. So it's important that we recognize what advice that is that's good and that's actually effective and the things that are just hot right now and the things that just cycle through. And so these books are great in that respect because pretty much nothing in them is a hot fad right now. <laughs> so it's very easy to tell what can be reliable advice. So now we're going to get to the differences. I have about five key differences between the two books. And before I continue just as another disclaimer, I actually haven't read Baby Wise fully cover to cover. And it's because it's just written so differently from the Baby Whisperer book. It seems like it's more of a book that is set up for you to read it before you have your baby. And Tracy Hogg's book is definitely written for mothers who are sleep deprived and who already have a child. Um, it's definitely something you can read before, but it's just such practical advice that it just makes sense to read it while you have a baby. And this, honestly, Baby was makes more sense to read before you have a baby and then revisit after. That's not a difference I'm talking about, but that is just something that I found different between the way that the styles of the book are written. So I got Baby Wise after I got the Baby Whisperer book. So I was already following Tracy Hogg's routine and everything like that. So I didn't really need Baby Wise, but I just liked hearing about the similarities and things like that. And it's nice to kind of read a book that's similar, but has some differences in it that you can compare them to. So the first way that I believe that they're pretty different is that Baby Wise is kind of more rigid. There's this idea in Baby Wise about flexibility, but flexibility happens only after you've established a routine. And I think this is similar to Tracy Hogg's idea of routine busters, that you have a routine and then something like travel or sickness or family stuff comes up and just kind of throws your routine off whack, but then it's important to get back on that routine as soon as possible. And Baby Wise talks about that as flexibility, that sometimes you do need to be flexible in your schedule, but they really push that it's important that you're not too flexible and that you're not flexible too soon or flexible in the wrong ways. And I think that is good advice, obviously, but it's a little too rigid in that it's almost like the authors are just afraid that people will read their book and then get too flexible with it and veer off schedule and then they'll be like, what happened? I stopped following this, but it, it's not working anymore. And I don't think that should be such a huge concern. I think obviously we need to keep checking and make sure that we're on track and that we're doing the age appropriate thing for our child. But I think we as parents have the ability to at least look at our actions and know if we're veering off the path of what we were trying to do or not. It's also more rigid in that eat, wake, sleep cycle that it talks about in the book that when those instances come up where you need to be flexible, those should be like very rare, very unoften, and they should have nothing to do with the baby essentially it should just have to do with the parent making that decision like if you're on a plane and your baby is crying but you just fed them an hour and a half ago they aren't supposed to eat for another hour what do you do do you breastfeed them blah 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 and i just would hate the idea of, of having a mom on the plane think like i can't feed my baby because this book told me i i had to stick to the schedule and it's really important and it just sucks that people i think read baby wise and think that, that they, they kind of get that rigid mindset. But I think if you were more of a baby whisperer reader, 
you would just do it because you just know that you can work out the routine later and you can get back on it even if you do have a little mess up in the middle of the day. The second difference between the two is differences in schedule. So they're actually really similar routines that Tracy Hogg and the Baby Wise book offer up for each age. And that is something I love because that helps me feel more confirmed that you know I'm doing the right schedule and it's definitely age appropriate for my child and not just something Tracy came up with and obviously routines can look different from household to household just depending on the time that you want to do it the time that you want to wake up and have bedtime and whatnot but that cycle always stays the same however with baby wise things get different around four months what they actually recommend is that you continue a three hour routine and you drop the dream feed at four months and they say that you can continue the dream feed if you're breastfeeding, but not if you're bottle feeding. I don't get that at all. This is, I think one of the things with these two books is, is it is kind of more in a formula favoring era is when they were written. And so I think most mothers are breastfeeding, but I don't get why you would need an extra feed just if you're breastfeeding and not if you're formula feeding especially at four months you're supposed to drop a feed and with tracy hogg you're supposed to move to the four hour routine at four months and you're keeping the dream feed until seven months and that's when you drop that feed and that's the next feed that you would drop after you switch the four hour routine but with baby wise it's just a little more iffy in that respect and it's really not age appropriate for your baby to be eating every three hours still at four months. If you haven't switched your four month old over to a four hour schedule and you're still feeding them every three hours, then you're going to end up with some baby who snacks. You're gonna end up with a snacker. And that is something that I talk about. I just did a recent video for switching from the three month to the four month routine. And I do think that that is a super important switch that really helps set your baby up for sleep training and for introducing solids. So I don't love that Baby Wise doesn't do that same transition, that they just really cling to that, feed them every three hours during the day, because I really don't think that that develops a healthy eating habit for your child. There's also some other differences with the way that Baby Wise sets up their routines and schedules, and they never suggest cluster feeding. That's a really big thing that Tracy suggests, especially in the first three months, is tanking up in the evening, and that can help to eliminate nighttime feeds. Baby Wise has very specific ways that you condense nighttime feeds, and they call them merging, and so you merge two feeds into one, essentially, during the night, and then eventually you do that during the day and that's just way more systematic i like tracy's approach of like feed them as much as possible before you go to bed do the dream feed and then just see what happens during the night and then do the morning feed and eventually your baby will pick up on that and the nighttime feeds just will stop because they won't be needed anymore i don't really like the idea of systematically combining nighttime feeds because i do think nighttime feeds only happen because they're needed and as soon as they stop happening that's because they're not needed anymore and so in this way i guess you're following your baby a little bit which is probably why baby wise wants you to be the one who merges the feeds but i just i don't know that's just my preference there so obviously if, if you would rather be in control of merging those nighttime feeds then you can be and there's a way that you can do it but it just makes more sense to me to just make it so that they're not necessary anymore the third way that these two books are different is that baby wise is not concerned with emotional security <laughs> and this starts kind of from the beginning tracy starts off her book by talking about baby temperaments and emotions because the most important thing that you should know before you learn the proper way to feed your baby and put them to sleep is your baby and you should understand their temperament their behavior things that they like and dislike you should try to be a more conscientious and patient parent towards them and that is her foundation of why we do everything else but with baby wise that's kind of a secondary thing and it doesn't really have anything to do with getting your baby to eat and sleep additionally the authors of baby wise do recommend cry it out methods for sleep 
and they I actually I'm not sure when they say it's appropriate to start doing that but I did read I was going through it again recently yesterday and I did read that they think it's okay for eight week olds to be left to cry it out in the crib during naps which I don't agree with in any way shape or form if you are going to do cry it out if that's just the way that you've decided to do it and not do pick up put down it should never be done before your child is four months old eight weeks is way too early in my opinion i'm not sure if they say a specific age where you can start doing that in baby wise it might be somewhere between four and six weeks is my guess uh, it's probably six weeks because i know that's when they say you should always have nighttime feeds until six weeks and the earliest your baby should sleep eight hours is at six weeks that's what they say in baby wise so i'm assuming that they are just okay with cry it out and starting from six weeks on but that's just not okay in my book and if you read tracy hogg's book then you know it's not okay with her either and so that's a huge difference that is just like the philosophy of the book and the heart behind it so that's why I just can't read baby wise I just don't think it's helpful in that way you can't just put your eight week down for an eight week old down for a nap and leave and let them figure it out for themselves and that leads us to our fourth major difference which is that baby wise doesn't teach you how you can teach your baby it gives you a bunch of facts and a bunch of things that you as a parent can and should do but it doesn't teach you how to guide your baby, which is what Tracy Hogg really emphasizes with when we get to know our baby and we get to learn how to be a patient and conscientious parent, then we come alongside them and we guide them to what they need to do and to things that are age appropriate for them. So especially with sleep training, for example, we're always in there with pick up, put down. Yes, our babies might cry, but we don't leave them. We we're in there actively teaching them how they can put themselves to sleep and with baby wise it's just you need to do you need to sleep so i'm leaving you and that is not something that i love either <laughs> i love the idea that tracy hogg lays out of coming alongside your child in that respect and also even when it comes to eating and teaching them solids it's not just you have to eat this much at this time and you have to eat it now it's making food fun it's having family meals it's not doing things your way but knowing your baby and doing the right thing that's good for them and the way that they need it to be done so baby wise in my opinion kind of trumps your child's temperament a little bit in that respect i think most parents can probably read baby wise and also understand how their baby is different from a typical baby but that's not a natural skill and it might not even be something we think about so if we're a parent for the first time reading baby wise before our baby is born and then our baby doesn't come out doing these things very well because they're not a textbook baby then we're going to become very frustrated and we're not going to listen to our baby and see what they actually need this kind of topic i think is where the controversy behind baby wise comes from because you are leaving your child to cry it out you are dropping nighttime feeds even if your baby is waking up for them a lot of parents have been too rigid with this to the point where their children have gone malnourished and have been overtired and emotionally neglected and you can probably google things about that people are really harsh against this book and i think that also comes back to the fact that it's very rigid in the way that it's written and parents stick to it too much and it's unsafe to stick to it too much is the problem <laughs> and so um i think you can be a wise parent and you can read baby wise and you can implement everything it says and be caring and nurturing towards your child but if you're following the book more than you're following your child and what they need then you are going to do your child harm and that is a huge danger with this book and that's something I love about the baby whisperer is she has really practical advice that you can implement that you can think about like I would put my daughter down for a nap read a chapter of her book 
and then go and do it after my daughter woke up. And I just loved that. And I was able to read it even in my sleep deprived mind and do it. And that's another thing that I mentioned earlier. Baby Wise isn't ideal for after you've had a baby. It's more before you've had a baby. And so I don't think they kept sleep deprived mothers in mind when they wrote this because I do think it is a little dense. And that brings us to our fifth big difference is that it's written by doctors and I think it's a very doctory in the way that it's been written. It really does seek to inform the reader about babies. There's a whole chapter with diagrams on how you hold your baby to burp them. But again, that's not something that you need to know after you've had a baby. I think you, you'll have figured that out by the time you open this book after you're home from the hospital. It really does kind of feel like word vomit at in some points. I turn to the table of contents and it's confusing how it's organized. I, If I need to learn about my three week old and their sleep habits, I don't know what page to turn to with it. And I basically have to go and flip through and then find what sounds right. And then maybe there's other tidbits that I need to know that are sprinkled throughout the book, which is why, you know, if you read it before, then you can kind of bookmark everything and then go back to it later. But I was gifted this months after my daughter was born and I was just like, there's no way I'm reading this. Uh, but what I love about the Baby Whisper book is you can literally look at the chapters. You can say, this is the one I need, flip to it, read it. You can look at the headings. You can say, this is my baby's age, flip through it, read it. And just the way she's written it is easy and comprehensible. Babywise is a little more factual, a little more stiff in the way that it's written. It's written by doctors, so maybe that's a part of it. And I think that they're trying to come from a place of authority, like knowledge authority on the subject, which, you know, if you're a pediatrician, I would say you have some knowledge on the subject of babies. Again, and, and the two doctors that wrote it are both men, not knocking on men at all because dads are great and I love my husband, he's an amazing father, but he definitely got far more sleep than I did in the first few months of my daughter's life. And he wasn't the one sitting at home reading books to figure out how he needed to take care of his daughter. I was the one doing that even though I was riding on three or four hours of sleep. And so I just think it's important that when books about care are written, books about newborn care are written, that they should be written for moms who are sleep deprived because that is probably like 90% of who's writing it. So that comes to my conclusion on the topic. I'm sure you can tell I favor The Baby Whisperer way over Baby Wise. They're both good and they have similarities. And if you have both of them, then you can compare them and that's good. If there's, there might be some things in Baby Wise that you like more than Tracy Hogg's book or vice versa. So I'm not saying don't read it. I know lots of parents who have just done Baby Wise and their babies have turned out totally fine. I just think personally, the differences are very vast in philosophy, but the similarities come down to the practice of it. So that is just really all about how we're different and how we all have different ideas and ideals of what we want our life to look like after we have a baby. So go ahead and try out both of those books if either of them sounds interesting to you and see what you like more and see what you end up doing. Thanks for watching this video. I hope y'all liked it. If you have any questions, please leave them below. If you want to talk about your experience with either of these books, please let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Additionally, if you have any other comments you want to throw in or any ideas for future videos, you can leave that below as well. And go ahead and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and make sure you stay subscribed so that you can be notified when the next video comes out as well. Thanks for watching.